day traders, Rich here. Today, I thought we'd start getting to work in uh, looking at um, some quality systems that we can use in our diversified portfolio. Uh, before we get to the end of the portfolio phase, though, uh, we need to always start with quality ingredients. It's just like a chef in a restaurant who's trying to produce that signature meal. And if they start with low quality ingredients, well, you know the result of that. So the same principle is applied here. Quality inputs result in quality outputs. And in determining what our quality inputs are, in terms of our price following philosophy, we, we need to adopt some core standard principles to every strategy we design to ensure that at the portfolio level, it all works as a cohesive whole and there are no weak spots in the portfolio where particular poor system designs bring down the whole portfolio. So we need some level of consistency in our core design logic applied across each system that we look at and finally include in our diversified portfolio. So let's get into it. So in a nutshell, we can look at uh, fundamental core design principles that must be present in any system that we are looking at, which have potential to be included in a diversified portfolio for a systematic price follower. So all the individual systems must be asymmetrically designed to cut losses short and let profits run. That's the central mantra of the price following community. So essential design criteria for all composite systems that you include in your portfolio include the need for an initial stop, which is an initial stop on entry to minimize maximum adverse risk exposure following entry. We need a trailing stop condition, which is used as a basis to define the end of the trending condition and allow for unlimited profit potential, but not leave too much profit on the table when the trends end. We also need to ensure we do not apply a profit target. So no profit target, which allows therefore for us to have potentially unlimited profit potential on any of our trades. We can never predict that in advance, but having no profit target allows that open-ended possibility. And from time to time, the market will deliver some outlier results simply by virtue of the fact that we haven't adopted any predictive outcome in relation to an assessment of what our profit target is. So we remove that profit target. The open-ended profit condition ensures all our system ingredients possess positive skew with the law of large numbers. And that positive skew is a necessary criterion to actually achieve diversification benefits. We won't go into the exact reasons for that now, we'll do that at a later date. But when we're dealing with positively skewed systems, diversification actually adds some extra secret source to providing an additional edge over strategies that have negative skew. Now the third essential design criteria is for an entry filter. And the reason we use an entry filter is to avoid trading the trending condition during normal day-to-day -day conditions, as opposed to more exotic or extreme market conditions where unidirectional price extensions are more prevalent and markets are less efficient or mean reverting in nature. The final criteria is a breakout entry design, and that's to ensure that no possible outlier is missed. Type 2 errors for price followers are the greatest sin, and that means the ability to miss the big outlier trade. So we adopt a breakout entry design as opposed to a retracement entry design into our trends to ensure that through the breakout entry method, we never possibly miss a big outlier. Now, provided that all these five golden rules are obeyed in the strategy design phases of portfolio compilation, then we have the broad foundations of a potential high quality system ingredient for our broad diversified portfolio. So let's keep these fundamental design principles in mind as we now turn to the strategy development phase of portfolio creation. So here we have our 
first system that we're going to be looking at that might be a potential strong uh, candidate for including in our price following um, portfolio. Uh, this particular system uses the Donkian channel as a means of determining a breakout method. Now the Donkian channel, which is seen here on the chart with the blue line being the upper channel and the red line being the lower channel, was developed by Richard Donkian and he was an American commodities and futures trader and a pioneer of the managed futures segment where he used rules-based approaches. Now he's also regarded as one of the fathers of trend following. The Donkian channel indicator itself is formed by taking the highest high or the lowest low of the last n number of periods. Now n being the look back period. So on a daily chart such as this, where each bar represents a day, a 50 period Donkian look back channel would, would look at the last 50 days and determine the highest high over that last 50 day period. And it would look at the last 50 days to determine the lowest low of that last look back period. That therefore uh, forms a basis for the, the highest high and lowest low being plotted on the chart. And you can see that the chart is effectively a channel which displays the level of volatility within the upper and lower bands, which describe the overall price movement over the last 50 bars. So in this instance, we use the channel as a method of filter to determine uh, the overall price movement over the last n number of periods. So when we use a, a short look back, such as a 50 period look back versus a long look back, such as a 400 period look back, you can see that we're using the Donkian channel itself as a method of entry filter. If we are looking to trade within the normal day to day market range, we'd be using a short look back of, say, 50 periods. But if we want to move out into more exotic um, periods where a lot more a price has to make a lot more effort to reach the highest high or lowest low, you can see then that we are potentially using this as a filter to define what are more exotic versus what are more normal uh, market conditions. Let's now have a look at how we use this, this uh, Donkian channel indicator and any other additional indicators in, in the terms of a, a trading system that meets those core design principles. So what we're looking at is um, where price is in a trading range and then we have a, a stepped movement in the Donkian channel either to the short direction or a stepped movement into the long direction. So let's take this example where price has been oscillating uh, between the upper and lower Donkian channel. And now we get a step down movement in the Donkian channel. This indicates that over the last 50 days, we now have a breakout trend uh, opportunity in the short direction. In the same way as when we're looking at a, a range bound condition, which breaks up into a long direction, we are looking for a, a long uh, position, uh, long entry as a, in terms of a breakout, expecting that the price bias will continue on into the future. So that's a, the broad method of how we use the breakout channel itself as, as the uh, breakout entry method. You'll see that uh, we never wait for a retracement of price back into the direction of the trend. So uh, when we plot this Donkian channel um, out in the context um, of the market condition, you will see that you will never actually miss a major outlier if you apply, apply this fundamental technique. Now, in addition to the Donkian channel, we also use a, a moving average. It can be a simple moving average or an exponential moving average. And this is signified by the yellow line here. That yellow line or this, the, the moving average itself has a short look back of say 10, 10 bars or so, and is simply used to ensure that when we do get um, a breakdown in the Donkian channel or a break up in the Donkian channel, that we also need a corresponding um, a move in the moving average to suggest as an additional confirmation measure to say when we're short, we want the short term moving average to also be in the direction of the short trade. And when we are long, we want the short term moving average to also the slope of it to be in the direction of the long trade. This is just to ensure that we have additional uh, filter to ensure momentum is on our side. In the, in the instances that we have a slow creep or a slow progressive step up in the Donkin, but not backed by any strong momentum. 
uh, this, this filter will ensure that we knock out those instances. So therefore we're looking for fairly good, strong, solid breakouts in the direction of the long or short bias. So now it's time to um, look at the how we apply the stops and the trailing stops in the context of this breakout trading system. So I'll use the ATS trail tool that we've recently developed, which gives you uh, an understanding of the impacts of particular types of trailing stop condition. So in this particular example, where we are looking at the Euro USD market on the daily time frame, um, we have our indicators already selected, such as the Donkian channel, as well as the, um, in this case, an EMA, a short-term um, EMA. And now we want to look at um, a, a position where um, we, we trade um, in accordance with the Donkian breakout and see how it goes when applying a trailing stop condition. So in this instance, um, we clearly have a strong outlier move here. Um, that, that is a fantastic trend that obviously we'd have liked to have caught. So let's assume just for hypothetical purposes and for this demonstration that um, we are uh, in this zone up here now uh, looking to exploit this short term breakout um, of this um, particular market condition. So the first thing we do is um, we apply um, the entry condition using this line to the point of the breakdown in the Donkian channel. Um, uh, in this case, uh, we'd be applying it approximately at this range here. And then we, um, because uh, we are trading in the direction of the overall price bias um, and the we look at the um, moving average, which has a slope towards the short direction. And we also have short term confirmation of the donkey and break in the short direction as well. So that's enough to um, have a trade signal uh, where we would be taking an entry short. So let's select a short trade at this point in time. And for this example, um, when we take the short position at approximately this point here, the entry point here, uh, initial stop loss um, is immediately configured uh, when we take the trade entry. And uh, that stop loss um, basically provides a, um, a point of, of minor loss if we have an adverse price move directly back um, a wave uh, with a false breakout effectively. So it's a, a a short distance away, this initial stop, which protects our adverse risk exposure in relation to this trade entry. We then um, might apply a, a, a trailing rule. Um, let's, let's take, for example, a, um, an, a trailing rule using ATR as a method to trail uh, price move. And uh, what that does is from the point of the initial stop, we'll get a trailing condition emanating from there um, in accordance with a particular defined ATR multiplier. Let's apply a four ATR multiplier to a, um, a, a stepped trail. Um, and what we'll do um, based on the open price, uh, we'll apply a four ATR condition. So as you can see, we now have a stepped trail that progressively moves in the overall direction of the short trade as it moves great more into profit. And the step trade always protects us from any adverse move. Um, and when that trail is triggered, we would consider that that particular trending series is over for our particular definition here. So in this case, our trailing stop of 480R allows us to trade right down to this point here where we would exit the trade when price moved and touched the trailing stop condition. Um, so guys, now that uh, we have, uh, we understand the basic principles of this donkey and breakout system, I think we'll leave it um, here for today. Uh, we've got a lot more work to do, but this is a good point to, um, to um, stop this particular video. Um, so I'd like to just bring you back to the summary of the general design con conditions that we need to address for all um, all of our systems that we include in our diversified portfolios. And that is to ensure that uh, we cut losses short and let profits run. So they must have an initial stop. They must have a trailing stop. There must be no profit target applied. We need an entry filter to define 
uh, when to trade or when to execute our entries outside of normal market conditions. And we need to ensure our system has a breakout entry design configured into it. So our next video will feature how we convert this general breakout system design into a fully automated systematic solution from which we then undertake rigorous tests over extensive data sets to turn this general solution into a robust system ingredient with multi-market potential. So that's it guys. Now uh, we're gonna go, go away and code this up in MT4. And then um, in our next video, in a few more days time, uh, we'll be coming back and um, showcasing um, the different variables we need to consider and the method of testing those variables to come up with these robust solutions. So we hope you like this video. Um, if you did, uh, please subscribe. And um, also we hope that you become members of our forum where you can, uh, we can all interact together and discuss uh, aspects of this video that pick your interest or if you have any concerns or queries. So if you want to become a member, then come on over to atstradingsolutions.com and join up as a member uh, where we can work collaboratively together on developing powerful systematic trend following portfolios. Thanks for watching.